is whether you agree with the theories or assumptions about about urban in migration. Um, there's this part early in the talk where he talks about the the flows into cities. Um, I think maybe um, we could start as we uh, I was in working group one together with uh, uh, Aga and Sarah and um, we have yeah discussed uh, this video last Friday a bit and um, firstly I think we were um, rather skeptical skeptical about uh, some of the arguments that uh, Muga makes and um, on the first question of uh, which is on maybe the drivers uh, for uh, migration towards cities, uh, we we found that Muga actually only uh, emphasizes the the city's uh, appearance as um, what he terms as uh, uh, what is it democratic uh, cosmopolitan and. Uh, this is what he somehow highlights uh, this this appearance of a city which uh, drives uh, migration towards it and on the other hand maybe also a crisis that uh, or war on the countryside uh, which makes people migrate towards cities but um, we thought that in this uh, with this point he neglects a number of other drivers very important ones such as economic incentives um, persisting networks between you know, personal and uh, institutional networks maybe that people have that uh, yeah, make them move to some other place and also a number of uh, individual expectations and um, I think um, in, in general we had the feeling that uh, Muga has uh, an image of the city as something or the, the idea that uh, cities have some universal qualities um, that uh, are yeah, the same for every city in some way. And we think that is uh, that needs to be discussed rather skeptically or critically. Uh, thank you, Lucas, for your views. Uh, what I think that uh, in the COVID situation, which is also raising one important question that will concentrated high uh, investment, high density cities have a prominent place in the new emerging world. Are they successful at providing an adequate return on investment? And above all, uh, do they provide a quality of life, life and happiness to all their residents? Uh, if we cite the example of Mumbai, an average uh, Mumbai resident spends more than 95 minutes to commute from office and home. So I think that uh, the the point which which was made in the lecture was regarding the planning of the city. But when we will plan and uh, how we will plan the existing cities, and especially uh, there is a there is a lot of discussion on the smart cities uh, and these smart cities are for, for whom? Thank you. Um, may I talk? Yes, please. Oh. Uh, uh, I think uh, the lecture start, uh, you know, you know, oh, it was a fascinating warm up. Uh, he mentioned some bold spots, and uh, I think uh, uh, it's an interesting example about Syria and the narrative line that end up in war. Uh, he, uh, but uh, I think there is some. Uh, about uh, you know um, example uh, some cities that are in peace for example and uh, don't engage with climate change issues but they have high uh, rate of immigration and immigration and fugitive for example um, uh, some people 
uh, especially in my country, they are immigrate and uh, for being uh, of a uh, high critical economic uh, situation make them to move uh, to move on. Maybe it's based off uh, some uh, climate issue, for example, drought and uh, drought uh, uh, force them uh, to lose their farms because uh, many of uh, the inhabitants in uh, villages uh, are doing farming. Uh, they had to move on for better uh, life situation and job in the keyboard here uh, to make them to move. Um, and these um, these matters should uh, you know uh, when we want to uh, assess this kind of situation, we should uh, widen our horizon. You know, we should uh, look at it from different sides: social, environmental, economical. Uh, there are fancy words, for example, uh, environment. Uh, environment friendly situation. For example, uh, um, consider that you want to stop a, a thermal cycle planet, okay, and want to uh, invest on uh, green energy. Uh, what's uh, the situation of laborers? What's uh, what uh, we want to do with the investor, okay? Uh, but uh, um, we, how we confront the uh, uh, enhance on enhancement of unemployment in this section? You know, um, we should uh, also look at the culture of the nations of the cities that we encounter. Um, in some sometimes immigrate us and uh, worsen the problem. Um, I just have something really short to add. Um, I agree with what Lucas said about his interpretation of um, Robert's kind of vision of what a city is. And something that I wrote down during the video was that he said that a city is the perfect antidote to reactionary nationalism. Um, and I'm not sure that I agree with this quote anyway, um, but I think it kind of re reinforces this vision of what Robert thinks the city is and kind of like this whole, it's cosmopolitan. And he also said it's where the future happens first. And I think that kind of solidifies that that's how he perceives a city to be. Uh, hi, all. I think I am. I think he makes some really um, sweeping one size fits all kind of statements, a bit like a politician. Um, and I think he fails to address some of the key issues in cities, which are around inequality of resources, um, inequality of access, and issues of power. So these sweeping big plans, you know, who who makes the decisions? Who makes the decisions around? what is right for the city, who makes the plans, etc. And and I think he really fails to to address these uh, these nuances. Um, I think this connects uh, to your point, uh, Katinka, um, and also to the to the second question, maybe already. Um, that um, Muga seems to only focus on this this imagined level of this city and thereby um, somehow loses a connection to both the um, heterogeneity of the city itself because he, he only seems to um, draw a, a, a container somehow, an abstract container of the city and uh, forgets how, how diverse its internal structures are. And on the other hand, he, uh, we had the feeling that he also, even though he talks about the connections between cities, rather loses the, the connection that cities have to their national governments, for instance, or even to transnational constraints such as the market, 
market constraints or uh, transnational networks or things like climate policies or something something that uh, states uh, apply to on uh, um, align to A lot of uh, really interesting points come up uh, and, and different degrees of being convinced by this argument. I guess it's probably a familiar argument to many of us, this idea of cities as being kind of uh, what will save us or what kind of accelerates and uh, brings forward the future. Um, but I, I hear several points of, um, of, you know, contrasting with your own approach. Um, and, and maybe the third, the third prompt is a, a way to try to be more specific about these uh, points of disagreement in how to approach cities. Uh, so so what, what actually stops cities from implementing this? One of the points I think uh, you put a finger on is the relationship of the city with national governments or with its larger context. And another seems to be more what happens within the city in terms of the, the politics or the power play. Yeah. Yeah, we had the feeling that uh... In this case, uh, his example of Singapore seems rather odd because uh, he highlights Singapore as some kind of a role model for um, straightforward implementation of measures. And uh, Singapore uh, is some, somewhat the, the amalgamation of a state and a, a city at the same time. So um, this, this point seems, seems rather weird to us. And I think also in the sense that, well, Singapore is maybe not the perfect role model in, in terms of, you know, democratic decision making. It's uh, maybe a little bit odd, as, as you know, he's supposed to be a political scientist, but at the same time, he somehow has a really, what well, kind of a narrow engineering mindset, you know, problems and solutions, and he tends to sideline the political questions, like I think uh, also, uh, also um, um, mentioned already. Um, and I, I, but I was I was less thinking about the way he used the term resilience. Uh, I don't know too much about it, but 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 he had he seemed to have um, like uh, sort of his own view of resilience as well, which maybe is not um, how it is used in some other contexts. For example, if you look at the 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 uh, transition town movement, who, which, which is also all about resilience, you know, they have this more um, localized, low-tech, uh, you know, self, um, I don't know, self, uh, self-managing uh, view of cities, or, or, or you know, um, whereas he, he seemed to have a more, you know, global, cosmopolitan, uh, high-tech, uh, growing. Uh, um, view of, of, of cities, of cities. So, so uh, uh, I don't know how that fits into the idea of resilience. Um, I disagree, I think, and I think it's important that he did use Singapore as an example because none of his solutions mention like this model of Western democracy in a way to build these solutions. And so I think highlighting examples which are built on a different um, system shows that each city can adapt these solutions like given their own context, does that make sense? Um, like without forcing everything to conform to what, what we see as democratic. I think the, sometimes uh, the uh, problem and the policy and the problem has been so, uh, solved from um, top to bottom. For example, they have the power to make decisions. So maybe they neglect by the, uh, the ordinary PV issues. But uh, when they uh, look at the, uh, for example, 
uh, down to bottom and they make a more uh, effective solution for these kind of problems to reduce the uh, you know uh, the unsafe uh, atmosphere of social and economical uh, uh, problems. Uh, and another issue is that uh, we should uh, look at uh, who make the decisions, who the, choose the policies, and who have the power to uh, implement the decisions. Um, these are important uh, issues, I think. Um, I think so we've also come up with another point of why cities are not implementing simply implementing these measures and uh, that was just uh, the the uh, idea that often these measures are rather expensive and uh, counterintuitive to maybe economic reasoning and that is just I guess often a point what stops cities from uh, not going uh, uh, or not taking a, the, the path to sustainable development because there are more short-term economic uh, incentives like um, expanding industrial growth or something uh, that just in, in a short time rationale makes much more sense for a city to, to uh, develop its capacities. Um, I think that a lot of, well, the way I see it anyway, the um, five other suggestions all stem from the first, or the five other solutions all stem from the first solution, which is the need to have a plan and a strategy to implement it. And so I think if you don't have a plan which covers all the other points, then it's difficult to kind of know what you want to implement anyway. Um, so I think it will kind of pivot from the need to have an aim or a vision of the city. And then you can integrate the other five solutions that you suggested, <laughs> but you need to know what direction you're going in um, and what the aim is in order to kind of get everything else aligned with that, I think. May I? Um, um, I do agree with what Lucas has just mentioned about the economic driver. I think this is a very important topic in at least uh, Latin American countries because most governments focus on the present time or the near close future time and their expenditures are based on immediate results. So they would only implement solutions into cities that could bring them immediate or close to a very near future results so they can in a way provide a good image for a political vote and elections that's an economic political driver so in terms of um, we all know that um, education for example that's an investment that will take decades to see results but uh, most of the countries do not invest that because um, they have to provide a big amount of budget whose results will not be seen in the coming years. They will be shown off after a few decades. And that doesn't have a political retrib retribution to their governments. So I do agree economic driver is very, very important. That's also a reason that stops a good planning city and to focus on the right drivers for um, environmental and sustainability change. I absolutely agree with Patricia and Lucas. These are really important points, I think, because like Patricia said, it, it's easy or 
it is uh, really great to have these ideas, for example, in greening, greening uh, urban areas. But like you, uh, like Patricia said, it's the matter of economy and politics, because if you can't see it during your voted, uh, like those years that you are voted for, it's useless for you as a decision maker because you will not gain any more uh, like positive political effect if i can say that like this um yeah still i feel that um i guess some of these solutions are or some of the sustainability aspects are trying to be brought into an economic realm to to make them somehow profitable and valuable uh, for instance as, as under the term green economy or something and I think this is not a or I just want to mention that I, I feel that this this is not a, a, a singular solution for those problems to just marketize um, this transition and I think uh, it also takes, I mean, it's probably a good driver and a good incentive, but it also takes some definitely maybe ideological decisions to take. And uh, some that, yeah, that are not solely dependent on markets, marketing strategies. Lots of uh, great points in there, and uh, and feel we've covered a good bit of ground. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the lead on this in the in the first working group, and uh, you'll also post some reflections afterwards. We look forward to those, and if others feel feel like adding um, your thoughts uh, beyond that, you're more than welcome to. I think um, we, this might be a good moment, unless somebody has anything they they'd really like to add now, maybe. We go into a 10 minute break and then we'll continue with the next session. Thanks for now. See everyone.